Hello and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I am your host, Christy. I live in the Denver area of Colorado with my husband, Ron, and our two daughters, Tatum, who is 12, and Delaney, who is 9, and our new feline family member, Lilu the Tuxedo Cat. This is going to be put up late because it is right now 4.15 on Tuesday. Tuesday is the day that I normally podcast, and I podcast in the morning, or I record in the morning, and then I edit in the early afternoon, and then I have it loaded um, while I'm at knit night. However, that hasn't happened, obviously. Um, I My parents are trying to move here to Colorado, as I've mentioned before, and they have found a very lovely house that um, they wanted me to meet with the realtor this morning, or this early afternoon, um, to see if it was the the right house for them. And so I spent quite a lot of time driving out there and then touring the house, Skyping with my dad and then going through the house again with my mom and um, doing video for my mom, not with my mom, but for my mom because she was in jury duty. And so um, I got back just in enough time to pick up Delaney from school, and then I had to rush to the um, the grocery store and pick up some groceries. So we've just gotten home. The groceries have been put away, and now I am trying to do my podcast. But as I said, it's 4.15. I normally leave within the hour to go to knit night, uh, depending on what time Ron comes home from work. So I'm not even sure I'm going to have enough time to record this whole thing. Um, I may end up having to do this in split sections. Plus... It's starting to, it's not as bright outside, um, so I have my hot light shining on my face, which is causing a glare on my glasses, but you know what? Hey, I'm doing it, okay? Let's just let it go at that. So, uh, as, you, as I said, I'm your host, Christy. You can find me on Ravelry as christy Lael and on Instagram as christy Lael without the dash. We also have a relatively crafty podcast group where we talk about knitting and have knit-alongs and have giveaways. And speaking of knit-alongs, we have a knit-along going on right now. Our Summer Socks Discal, which goes for one, uh, what, 20, 15 more days, something like that. Uh, it ends on September 21st. So we are getting now to the last couple of weeks of it. Uh, for the cal, if you're not familiar, it is a sock knitting cowl. You can knit any kind of socks, any pattern, any uh, type of yarn you want. You can knit them any way, toe up, top down, whatever. Um, you can make them stockinette, you can make them scrappy, you can make them with a pattern, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can make adult socks and children's socks. I just ask that if it is a child's sock, um, that it be four socks for one entry and adult sock is two socks for one entry. And, uh, and yeah, so that is going on for another couple of weeks, as I said. We do have prizes for that. I will go over those prizes uh, probably next week because I have a lot to show you guys this week. And, um, and I want to make sure that I have time for all of that. So I'll go through the prizes next week, but I will say that I have kind of set up some prize packs. So you'll, um, for the FO thread, there will be a... Um, a skein of yarn and a bag, and for the chatter thread there will be a skein of yarn and a bag, and then there will be one other prize um, of a skein of yarn that I haven't uh, decided yet quite what I'm going to award it for, but um, there is that. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and get into my knitting, and like I said, I have a lot to show you guys today. I have a lot finished, I have a lot on the needles, I have a lot of stash, I have so much stash. So let's go ahead and talk about what I finished. Okay, so my first FO is this pair of socks that I knit for my friend. As you recall, uh, she asked me to knit these as payment for some personal shopping that she had done, or not payment, but um, reimbursement for the skeins that she picked up for me at a Canadian fair. These are out of Crafty Hippie yarn, and it's an 80-20 base. The colorway is Midnight Forest. It's very witchy type of a colorway. Um, I did these with my basic 
um, recipe. I did a Turkish cast on toe up, did a true afterthought heel, and ended with a one by one ribbing and Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I was mostly done with these last week. I think I just had to finish up the second sock a little bit, do the leg and do the heel, and so I have done that and they are done. And I did get them done in time for the end of August, uh, which is good. And if you recall, I I have another pair of socks that I need to knit for her as well. I have done the first sock, which I showed you last week. I have not done the second sock. I haven't even cast it on yet, but I will get to it soon. And then I have another pair of uh, sock FOs, um, or I have another sock FO, a pair of socks. So I was winding up some yarn last week and my youngest daughter Delaney pulled out this pair of socks out of my box of socks and she proceeded to put them on her feet. Of course they were too big because they fit me but um, but she put them on and she goes, Mom, these socks are comfortable. And then she looked at me with her big blue doughy eyes and said, will you knit me a pair of socks? How could I say no, right? So. I had her go through my leftover stash and she picked out one of my leftover skeins from a pair of socks that I had made for myself and a coordinating heel toe skein and I knit her up a quick pair of socks. Now you'll notice that these are on my sock blockers which fit my feet. Her feet are not that much smaller than mine. <laughs> they really aren't. It's like three quarters of an inch shorter. Um, I ended up, I did basically the same as I normally do. Turkish toe cast on. I did an after, or I did a fish lips kiss heel instead, and one by one ribbing and Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off to uh, accommodate for her slightly smaller feet. I did only 56 stitches, and um, and then I of course um, only made them as long as her foot, which as I said was only about three quarters of an inch shorter. So um, I knit until I ran out of yarn and then put the cuff on there. This is uh, spun right round in the blender colorway. You might remember my socks that I made out of this. I love this colorway. And she picked some um, Volmiza Twin in a weird different blue. It's like Cortense, I think. Um, and yeah, it, you know, they go well together. I didn't think that the blue was going to match so well, but I think it complements nicely. And, um, and yeah, and I almost got these done by the end of August. Um, but I had, I think I had the ribbing left to do and it was just too late. And so I went ahead and left it and finished them on September 1st. But she loves them and she's very excited and she has got plans for me to knit her more socks and her sister of course wants a pair of socks so I told them that I would knit them each two pairs of socks and then we'll see how they treat them <laughs> and if the socks get treated well um, then maybe I will make more but I do like the fact that I was able to make another pair out of my leftovers um, that's a good way for me to use up some of those you know the 30 or 40 grams that I have left over if I pair them with a, um, a coordinating heel and toe skein, then I'm good to go. But that is not my own my only two FOs. I have two more. So you guys might recall from last week when I was showing you all the yarns that I got on the yarn crawl that I had picked up a single skein of Ella Ray Aran weight and had decided that I was going to make a hat with it. Well, I found a fairly simple pattern and went ahead and wound it up and cast on and then bound off the next day. It's, I've forgotten how fast Aaron hats go. So this pattern is called Beloved Aaron, and I will put the designer down below. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, and it's a very simple pattern. Um, it's just a kind of a, a double linen stitch and uh, it was super easy. And like I said, it knit up very quickly. Um, I do have some leftover and I am thinking about doing uh, a pom-pom on the top, but I would like to have everybody's input. Should I put a pom-pom right here or should I just leave it as um, a hat by itself? I do have enough yarn left over probably to make a pom-pom, but I'm not sure. I'll go ahead and put it on. I made the largest size 
and I knit a couple of added rows because I wanted it to have a little bit of slouch. Um, so there you go. Really simple, fun to make. I know it'll be nice and snugly warm in the winter, um, which is coming. You might notice that I am wearing my back shore um, today because it was chilly this morning and it's, I think we had a high of 72 today, so it was good enough for me to wear my three-quarter sleeve sweater. And then lastly, the one you've all been waiting for, Mom's sweater is done! <laughs> Isn't it great? Okay, so it's not entirely done. Uh, it has no buttons. You might notice the button band um, is buttonless. Um, but I have to pick up buttons tonight at the yarn shop, and, um, and the buttons are honestly, they're just going to be red. Uh, she didn't want anything that was going to take away, detract from the loudness of the sweater, and so I'm just making red buttons, uh, or, or sewing on red buttons, rather. But it is done. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I lamented having to weave in all of these ends the other day. There was so many ends. I didn't count exactly, but I kind of figured it out. There was more than 80 different ends that I had to weave in and um, and that was annoying there was like 23 for each sleeve and then a bunch for the body and then the button band and the collar and the other band and you know so um but it is done and I have blocked it and all it needs is its buttons which I will get today and so on tomorrow and then it will be completely done and I can mail it to my mom. So I am really, really pleased with how it turned out. And I think that mom is really going to like it as well. And it should fit her very nicely. I did try it on. I'm slightly bigger than she is. So um, my arms are longer and so the sleeves come up to about here on me. And, um, and I could like bring it together but it would gape a little bit if I tried buttoning it. But I think it should fit her perfectly. So, so yeah, that is done. You guys won't be seeing that one again. I won't even, I'm not going to show it when I get the buttons because like I said, they're just going to be red. Hopefully they'll be invisible. Oh, and if you don't know, that is the gnarled oak cardigan, uh, which is a bottom up um, raglan with a cable joke. And it was fun to knit. Uh, the pattern was well written and whatnot. I do recommend it. So, um, it is um, initially supposed to be knit in a solid color, um, and it does look really nice in a solid color. But of course, Mom, she wanted rainbow, so she got rainbow. Okay, so those are all the FOs that I have for this week. I hope I didn't rush through those too much. I feel like, like with Mom's sweater, I've talked about it so much um, that I didn't have a whole lot left to say about it, but... Um, but yeah, so um, let's go ahead and get into my whips. And I have three different whips, and they're not all socks either. So first, in my foppish ferret bag, I have a little toe. This is out of my um, Bling Your String sock uh, blank that... I am knitting those socks for my friend to repay for. Um, she picked me up two of Erin's um, sock blanks, and uh, and so I am knitting with one of them. This is the Kiss and Teal colorway, and I haven't gotten very far on it, uh, but I've been busy knitting another pair of socks, and um, and so I, I will get further eventually. Uh, but I am enjoying the way it is knitting up. I love the blue, uh, the tone of the blue in this sock, but I also really love just the pops of the other colors as well. I really like how this is knitting up. And then, because it is September, and therefore fall, in my opinion, um, and super duper close to Halloween, I have decided that it is time to pull out my bat bag. Bat bag! Da 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 da! Bat bag! Anyway, 
So this, uh, this is also a you so and so bag, uh, one of her embroidered ones. I was super excited, and I have had it for like two months now, and I've just been waiting for the appropriate time of year to use it. So it has this kind of wreath of bats on the front, and then glow in the dark, bright orange bat fabric on the back. I love this bag. And inside it is. A mess. There we go. A pencil sock. A uh, no. A paper sock. And a pencil sock. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? So this is yarn enabler. Um, the, this I've been so excited to knit this as a birthday gift for my mom. She turns 65 near the end of the month, and so I am knitting her um, a pencil and paper sock. They are, um, she's a teacher, so I think that very apropos that she would have pencil and paper socks. And Topher um, on Instagram had mentioned, and had asked me if I was going to do a running red stitch um, along, like duplicate stitch along the side to um, have you know, to make it really resemble the paper. And you know what? I, I might actually do that if I can. If I can put it together, if I can get these socks done in time uh, to get mailed out to her before her birthday, then I think I might actually just do that. But I am really, really enjoying these. I have just passed the heel on this sock. You can see all of my measures. There, um, I put a stitch marker at every 10 rows, and then here is where my heel will go. I will be doing a an afterthought heel for this sock because it's stripey. This one, however, I will be doing a, um, a fish lips kiss heel. So they're going to look slightly different, but I'm okay with that. I don't think Mom will mind either. Um, and I am getting near to the point of doing the heel on this one. Now, Mom's feet are a little bit smaller than mine, so um, I have to knit just slightly less than I do. She, her feet are in between Delaney's and mine, so bigger than Delaney's, but smaller than mine. So yeah, you should definitely see a finished pair by next week. And then my last whip is in my Harvey the Chipmunk bag, which is also a you so-and-so bag. Um, and it is my fall bag. Now, September is fall, as I said, even though fall doesn't officially start until, you know, the 22nd of September. I still consider September 1 to be the beginning of fall, and so I am using my fall bags. And inside Harvey the Chipmunk is a sweater that I'm knitting for Tatum. And that is the Flax Sweater by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. No, yes, yes, a free pattern. Um, I had several skeins left over in each color um, of this uh, that I made for my back shore. I had originally gotten each of these colors to make sweaters by themselves, but um, when I saw back shore, I knew that I wanted to use uh, this yarn for that. And so... I thought, you know what, I have enough probably left over to make Tatum a sweater. So I am making her the flax card or the flax sweater out of the Madeline Tosh. Uh, this is Madeline Tosh Tosh DK in Oceana. Uh, now, the flax is meant to be knit out of worsted, but this DK is kind of heavy. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going ahead and, and doing this one. Um, However, I thought that I was going to get away with doing the small size for Tatum, but if I want her to be able to wear it for um, more than just this winter, uh, I needed to go up a size. So that meant that I was a little bit short on yarn. I had 875 yards and I needed 1,000 yards. So I went through my stash and I found this leftover skein of Malabrigo Rios in apple green, which... I think is a very nice compliment to the Oceana. So um, I am going to put stripes on the sleeves of her flax. And so I haven't gotten too very far. I just started it last night, but I, it's, it's knit top down, as you can see, and the collar is incorporated in the beginning. So you don't have to pick up stitches afterwards, which is always nice. This is a very simple pattern. Um, and then 
if you've seen the flax before, you know that there is a series of garter stitch garter stitches running down the sleeve. I opted out of those mostly because I was going to be changing colors on the sleeve doing the stripes and I thought that it might not look as good uh, with the stripes and so I'm just doing the whole thing stockinette. I've got just a couple more rows left to do and then I will um, divide for the front, take the sleeves off and um, yeah so it's it's looking good so far. It's really enjoyable Madeline Tosh DK is a very nice yarn to knit with, and this color, man, knitting with a pretty color can make all the difference. So, so yeah. Plus, I think that I just need to um, size myself down <laughs> to a medium, a small medium, so that I can only use a thousand yards in order to make a sweater for myself, because really, that would be lovely. Okay, so that is all of the stuff that I have on the needles. And that means it's time for yarn haul. My yarn haul today is exorbitant, and I apologize ahead of time. If you're not interested in yarn haul, then um, you are welcome to exit stage left now, and, um, and I appreciate you watching up to this point. Uh, if you are interested in the yarn that I've gotten in these past week or so, um, then hang around and I will go through it all. But I warn you, there's a lot. Okay, so the reason that there is so much yarn in this yarn haul is I won one of the baskets. You know how I was talking about the yarn crawl from last week and I was saying how each shop did a, a basket giveaway? And they had these huge baskets. They were um, drawing from and each, each shop you could go into and you could enter into their specific shop giveaway and um, and then there were three grand prizes for people who hit all 17 yarn uh, 17 shops and I figured that since I hadn't heard anything by you know when I podcasted last week that I hadn't won anything and that was fine but I was at knit night last week and I got a call from Colorado Springs and I was like hmm and he was calling me from Colorado Springs. So I answered the phone and it was the Wooly Works Knit Shop down in Colorado Springs telling me that I had won their basket, which was amazing. So I was sitting here at knit night with all of my friends knitting and I find out that I win this basket. So the only downfall to it was that I had to drive down to Colorado Springs to pick it up which isn't terribly far but it's an hour and I'd already driven down to Colorado Springs twice um, earlier that week, once by myself and once with the yarn crawl, and so I was kind of tired of it. But um, but one of my knitting friends offered to go with me, and so we drove down there on Friday, and we picked up my basket, and and it was a pretty good basket. Uh, now I I didn't keep everything. There were a couple of novelty yarns, and uh, there was a pattern book that um, I wasn't going to make anything out of, and that kind of thing. Uh, I did take pictures, and I posted them on Instagram showing exactly what was in the basket, but what I'm going to show you today um, is not all of that, because uh, I took out the things that I really wasn't going to use, and I'm going to donate those, um, but I, there was plenty that I wanted to keep, trust me. So I will go through that. I'll go ahead and go through that now. Here is the basket, and you can see it's filled with stuff, even after I took stuff out that I didn't want to keep. And there is also this package, which I have just stuffed all the needles in. There's um, a bunch of Knitter's Pride needles, some straights, some interchangeables. Um, there's There was uh, crochet hooks. There's... Like, you know, they, they've got the cube ones, and cables, and all kinds of things. So, um, I'm, I will... I will be using... I will be using some of those, but I think some of them I'm going to save for future giveaways. Like, um, like these, this pair of straights. This is a really nice pair of straights. Um, it's in a US-10, uh, and... And if I knit with straights, I would probably keep it, but I but I just don't. I use circulars for all of my knitting, so um, so I don't have much use for it. But I thought that maybe 
one of the viewer, one of my viewers might uh, enjoy this as as a part of one of a of a prize package later on. So um, some of these other needles will will go for that as well. Kind of share the wealth, as it were. I'm just going to kind of go through this. There's, these are not in really any particular order. Uh, first, I have three skeins of Brown Sheep Nature Spun Sport um, in Wood Moss, Saddle Tan, and Chocolate Kisses. And um, this is not a bad... This is, it's 100% wool. It's not super wash, um, but it's good for like you know, color work and stuff like that. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make with this. Um, but I liked the three colors together, so I probably will find something soon enough. Uh, it's not next to the skin soft, but maybe I could use it to do like a color, the, the front of a color work pillow or something like that. We'll see. There were several single skeins in there, so I don't have plans for any of these single skeins. I'm just kind of holding on to them for one day. Maybe I'll find a good single skein project, or I will come across more of the yarn or something like that. So this is Angora Extra, and if you hadn't guessed, this is Angora. This is 70% Angora, 25% wool, and 5% nylon. And I really like this blue. And you, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a very nice halo and it is very soft. Um, you know, it's made out of bunnies, so it's going to be soft. Um, I've seen several projects with this, um, you know, people making uh, cowls and stuff like that. Um, I don't have enough, but I think that I can get some in D stash uh, in order to um, to make something with it. I, I had couldn't find this color though, so I'm gonna have to like use it as an accent color. But uh, but it is really lovely. Then I also have a skein of this. This is Mirasol Yarns in their Nuna base, which is um, it says luxurious extra fine merino wool and mulberry silk. Uh, blended with a bamboo-sourced viscous. So it is really soft and lovely to work with. Um, and I love this color. This is such a pretty red. So, um, again, become something. I'm going to stop saying that now. Everything is going to become something. Just know that. Then I got a skein of Queensland Collection Oxley, which is 50% um, yak and 50% wool, which is also very lovely. I've never had yak before, so i um, excited to knit with this. And this colorway is... It's just color 11. It's a nice burgundy. And I got two skeins from Blue Sky, two different bases. This is their um, wool stock, which is just a worsted 100% um, highland wool, a nice workhorse, workhorse wool. Um, and then I got a skein of Techno, which is 68% um, baby alpaca, 22% silk, and 10% extra fine merino. This is also very soft and luxurious. And actually, this came... Actually, this came with a pattern for some fingerless mitts, so I might use this for that. Um, yeah, it's really soft. Speaking of soft, there was some misty alpaca in there. This is their lace um, lace weight yarn, and it is 100% baby alpaca, so it's also super soft. It's also very, very pink, and y'all know that I'm not a big fan of pink, and this is one of those shades of pink that I have a definite aversion to. However, I think I can over-dye this to be a different color, and um, so that's why I've held on to it. And then... I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it, but um, but I think it will look good over dyed and then knit up. It is a very fine lace weight yarn. I got another skein of Misty Alpaca. This on the other end of the spectrum. And this is their Cola Chunky, which is 20% alpaca, 
20 percent baby alpaca and 80 percent merino wool and this is obviously a big thick chunky wool I'm not a massive fan of this color but i think that um that i could th rock a hat out of this um so yeah, and it is also soft. Lots of soft yarn in this basket. Then there was a skein of Regia uh, in the Arne and Carlos design line, which is a self-patterning sock yarn. Um, I might use this for socks for Ron. It's a good workhorse yarn, and it is 75-25 um, uh, wool nylon. And included in the basket was a $50 gift card to the shop, so I got to shop on top of getting all of these yarns. One of the things that I got with my gift card is this skein of Regia Perfect. Now these um, are meant to, this yellow divides the two socks and they're meant to knit up to be exactly matching and they have striped cuffs. And I'm just kind of interested in it. I have another skein of this in my stash that I was going to make socks for Ron. Um, these might be socks for Ron as well because they are uh, a good Ron color, but, um, but they may also be socks for me. But this is a nice, brighter, I don't know if you can see in the, in the picture there, there's some brighter stripes there. Then I also, with my gift card, got a skein of Cherry Tree Hill Super Sock Select in the turquoise colorway. As I mentioned before, I'm interested in getting some solids to use for toes and heels and cuffs, to use for, um, um, you know, shawls and stuff like that as accents with some other more variegated, busy yarns, and uh, this is a very nice colorway. I'm normally not a huge fan of Cherry Tree Hill, but, um, but this is a really good color, so, yeah. And then, in the bag, in the basket, was two mini kits from Wonderland Yarns. This is their Cheshire Cat base, which is sock. Um, it is... The colorway is just a co coordinating assorted, so um, they go well together. Uh, maybe I'll use it for color work. Uh, maybe I'll use it for stripes. I'm not sure, but it's it's a sock weight yarn. And then this one is Mad Hatter, which is their sport weight. And this is in 5 Million Kisses, which is a limited edition colorway. And you can see it is a nice purple gradient. And if you remember from my mom's sweater, I got a skein of this in another shade of purple um, in their sport weight. And I have plenty of that left over, so maybe I'll use that with this as well. Uh, but I have a good gradient set here. And then with my gift card, I picked up this one. <laughs> I have seen Wonderland yarn in a lot of shops, and I love these these kits, but I can't always justify spending them, so I figured since I had a gift card, that's like free money. Uh, this is in the March Hair Worsted Weight, and this is um, the Mice in the Tea colorway. So you've got a gray, green, uh, teal, purple, and like plum um, colorway. I know the bag is in the way and I, I am sorry for the glare. Um, so I think I'm going to use this to make maybe a color work hat, something like that, but uh, I'm very excited about that. And that's the worsted base, as I said. And then there was this little felted notions pouch from Frabjuous Fibers, which is uh, the dyers between behind Wonderland Yarns. And yeah, it's just it's felted. It's got a zipper. It will hold my notions, um, and it's got these cute flowers on it. And um, it's earth tones, and I love earth tones. And the orange flower is the biggest one, which yes, that's how it should be, right? So loved this. And then I also got this little project bag. Um, for, uh, this is a pretty cheap project bag from Fia. And um, it's got cute birds on it. Uh, this is what one of the skeins came in with the pattern. And yeah, just a little project bag. So um, I love it. And it's orange as well. So yeah, that's basically what I got as my prize pack. It 
very generous basket um, and I am very excited to get into it. I've been waiting so I could show it to you. But that's not the only yarn that I got this, this week. I, I got more yarn. Some of this yarn I got a week ago or more than a week ago, but I didn't want to show it to you last week because I had so much from the the yarn crawl. So needless to say, my stash has grown a lot in the past two weeks. I decided that I wanted to knit um, a color work sweater, a bulky color work sweater that I, uh, um, short sleeve sweater that I had seen a while back and, um, and I really wanted to knit it. I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. And yes, I could look it up on my phone real quick and edit me looking it up out, but I'm kind of in a rush, so I'm trying to get through this without before Ron gets home. So I will put it down here, the, the name of it, and I will put a picture up here. So I figured I would pick up some bulky yarn. So I did. Uh, it's it's got to be super bulky. Um, so I got this off of Webs. I believe I got it off of Webs. This is Hayfield Super Chunky with Wool. So it's partly acrylic. And I got it... Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven skeins in in Blackberry, which is a nice deep purple. And then seven skeins, and then seven skeins in Hawthorne, which is a nice deep red. So um, I will be using those to make my color work sweater, um, and I will be doing that this year. Uh, and then... Lauren, over at Lolo Did It, sent out emails a couple of weeks ago saying that she was um, going to take orders for some sweater quantities of her yarn in worsted or DK, and I could not pass up that opportunity. So I contacted her, and I asked her for a sweater quantity of, look at the flowers, Lizzie. Look at this colorway. So it has kind of a peachy feel to it, maybe salmon-y, and then it's got all of these colored speckles. I absolutely love it. I have to pick the perfect pattern. I'm not sure yet what it's going to be, but I'm so excited. I also got a skein of Blue Suede Shoes as an accent color, which, um, which is a perfect complement to the blue in there, so I will use this for, uh, for the ribbing. And I, and I am super excited about that. Also, I got her most recent Hippo colorway. Well, the most recent at that point. She's now put out Hippo for Halloween, which I have also ordered, but it hasn't come yet. But this one was Hippo for Dio, Dia de los Muertes. So I have gotten that one. Um, and it's got some a lovely blue, green, and pink and orange speckles, and then I had her send me a mini, a little Lolo of Lucky to, um, to use for heel, toes, and cuff. Next, <laughs> I got my, um, Rainbow Sock of the Month for Vesper Sock, for Knitterly Things, my Rainbow Vesper Sock of the Month, and that is this one. This is Misty Mountain Rainbow. It's got stripes and sparkles, so I'm excited about that. Um, it's a nice kind of muted colors, which is, which is perfect for coming into to autumn. You know, summer, her summer rainbows were very bright, and so this one's a little bit more muted, which I like. Then you know that I am in the Desert Vista Dye Works Monthly Sock Club Cal, and I've been knitting a pair of socks out of Desert Vista Dye Works every month for the past eight months. And if you did it for the first six months, you got a free skein. Uh, so I ordered my skein, and it came, and it is Jan and Dean. It's upside down. It is Jan and Dean, um, which is after the, the band from the 60s. Uh, if you're not familiar with Jan and Dean, they were very similar to the Beach Boys. Uh, in fact, there's often that their songs are assumed to be Beach Boys songs, even though they're Jan and Dean songs. So um, this has got pink, purple, yellow, orange, and blue stripes. I think it's gorgeous. But I also bought off a D-Stash another skein of Desert Vista Dye Works because I wanted to make sure that I would have um, 
skeins for the rest of the year, and I forgotten that I was going to get that free skein and realized that I hadn't ordered a skein for September or for October rather, and they have like a four to six week. Uh, six week out shipping schedule and um, I wasn't sure if I was going to get it in time to make October socks so I bought a skein in D-Stash and it is this one and this is Woody and Buzz and this is like the Monopoly and the Monopoly Money where you have 150 gram skein in Buzz and 150 gram skein in Woody meant to make a sock of each so super excited about these I think they're adorable then I ordered the August Sock Blank Club from Erin at Bling Your Strings. I love her Sock Blank Clubs. And August was just this gorgeous colorway. Look at this, guys. It's gray, and it has all these great colors. She, it was a picture of a lake with um, these beautiful rocks in it, and um, and then the like the mountain behind it, so it's it's just, it encompasses all those colors. It is darker than I normally go, if you know with my socks, but I think it's going to make gorgeous, gorgeous socks. And then there, there is always a set of stitch markers in her packages. So there's some there's cute kind of opalescent stitch markers with a, um, a dragonfly um, focus stitch marker. And then there is also a little frog on a rock a progress keeper, which is adorable. I love these, Erin. I'm so glad you do these. Then I went to Carrie's shop at Creative Obsession. She has been putting out some really lovely autumn or, or yeah, autumn inspired colorways, and I could not help myself but order a skein of this. Look at this, guys. Is that not beautiful? This is called Spellbound. So it's an orange base, but it's got purple speckles, a bunch of purple speckles in there, and some green. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I cannot wait to knit. Look at that. I cannot wait to knit this. But that's not the only thing I ordered because it, it, it can't, it can't um, travel alone, can it? So I got this sock blank from her as well. Oh my gosh, you guys. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Go ahead, try. Try to tell me that's not gorgeous. Oh, I'm so in love with it. And I love how there's just like this, like this, this misbehaving spot that is like hot pink right there in purple. I love it. It's going to be great. I can't wait to knit this into socks. She also sent a skein as a prize for you guys. She is so generous with that. She has sent three, I think this is the second or third skein that she sent as a prize. She's an awesome person. If you don't follow Carrie's podcast, then you're missing out because you really need to. She's Carrie at the Creative Obsession. Create, creative Obsession. Uh, she sent this one. This is Campfire, and she is currently, or she just finished knitting up a pair of socks out of this colorway, and they look so good. I might have to go and order a skein myself because, um, yeah, it's gorgeous. So I will have a giveaway after the cowl ends for uh, Carrie's lovely yarn. Such a great, great colorway. Thanks, Carrie, so much. And then lastly, I'm finally getting down to the end. Uh, when I was at Knit Night on Tuesday... We did not knit. We actually had a Kool-Aid dyeing class. Um, so I was outside covered in Kool-Aid when I got the call about winning the basket. And um, I did two skeins that I dyed myself. <laughs> so this first one, um, I this is the first one I did. And I did uh, blues and greens. You can kind of see. I, I had no idea literally no idea what I was doing guys um, I was just putting it on there I had no plan uh, after I did the blues and greens I took some purple and just kind of did kind of speckly splotches and it turned out okay I think it'll be nice knit up I'm excited about it and then the second skein I did I just did speckles in whatever colors were kind of left over <laughs> after everybody had kind of put theirs together so there's purple and red 
and green and blue and orange. I don't think I have any yellow in there. I did a lot of orange. So yeah, that is my first ever foray into hand dyeing. Um, and dyeing with Kool-Aid is super simple, guys. I don't know if any of you all have done it, but it's it's easy peasy. I mean, it's like the, the simplest thing ever. You don't have to really worry about it. You make sure the yarn is wet. You put the Kool-Aid on there. You um, When you're done, you, um, you put the Kool-Aid mixed with water uh, on there. And then when you're done, you put it in the microwave for six minutes. Give it a, a quick rinse afterwards, and then you're done. That's the whole thing. Let it dry. Um, but it was, it, but it was fun, and it was fun doing it with all of my knitting friends. That was probably what made it the most fun. So, so yeah. So that is finally all the yarn that I got in this week, or these past two weeks. Um, and that'll probably it be it for a little while. I do have one or two skeins that are still straggling in, but. Um, but I need to stop because I'm really, I've got more than enough now. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and get into reading. Actually, I don't really have much to say about reading. Um, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm still reading the Chaos Walking trilogy. Uh, when I talked to you guys last week, I was just starting the, the second book and now I'm only halfway through the second book. Um, so I haven't made a whole lot of progress. I have started reading Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Um, I'm reading that as a um, as part of my this book club that I'm in, and I realized um, like yesterday that that I have to have it finished by Saturday morning. I don't know if I'm gonna make it because I just started it today, uh, but I did get the audiobook so I could listen to it while I drove out to check out that house for my parents and whatnot. So. So there's that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I haven't gotten far enough into it to really have any great opinion. I did read The Girl on the Train last year. I thought it was okay. I wasn't super duper impressed, but, um, but it was okay. So Into the Water may be better, and it may not be. We'll see. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of it for reading. I haven't, I haven't, I've been... I, had, I got a cold from Delaney last week, and um, and it kind of just put me out for the count. Um, so I was just tired every night and didn't get reading very much. So anyway, guys, that's it for this week. Um, I will edit this probably tomorrow. I am sorry that it won't get up on Tuesday, but it will get up on Wednesday as soon as I can. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy knitting. Bye.